Hi everyone, it's Richard from Watch Gecko Magazine here, um, along with Anthony. Hello. And uh, we wanted to talk to you today about a watch that's come in to stock in Watch Gecko, and we were actually really impressed with it. So much so that Anthony's actually wearing one at the moment, and I've got one sitting in front of me. This watch is the NTH Night Diver. Now that's really not its name. Its name is actually the Vintage White the neck and vintage white. However, we're colloquially calling it the Night Diver because it reminds us enormously of one of our favorite watches of all time. And the reason Anthony's here at the moment is because you're the only man I know who actually owns a Night Diver, not this Night Diver, but the Tag 1000. Where did you get an original tag. Is it a tag or a Hoyer? Which of you? I can't remember. It's a tag. It's, it's a, tag. a tag. Where did you get it? Um, so it's it's a bit of a funny story, but um, and, and now I'm going to sound like Lord Lucan or Lord Sumner or other, but I actually got it from my tailor, who was a watch collector. That's very Bond. It is very Bond. No, no. He's a chap uh, who, who tailors suits. He yeah. comes to you. And I noticed that on his wrist, he had an amazing Monaco. And... I was chatting to him. It turns out that he's got a huge collection of watches, some of which he was looking to offload. And I said, well, which ones? And he showed me a few pictures. One of them was the Tag 1000, um, which I became the proud owner of. It is very cool. I have to say it is very cool. When I saw it, it's, it's very, very special. And of course, the watch is synonymous with Timothy Dalton's slightly questionable entry into the James Bond franchise. With a parachute. With a parachute on a super yacht. That's me. Landing on top of canopy where there's a atypical, beautiful blonde lady who says, I wish something exciting would happen, and Timothy Dalton lands on the roof. But of course, we were not, weren't watching any of that. We were watching the fact that he was wearing a higher night diver. Now, I always remember that, um, the, the fact that he was wearing that watch. And of course, I think that lodged at the back of my mind. Um, I think on a very, very simple level. The reason why I wanted that watch is that whilst I've had lots and lots of watches in my time, um, unlike you, I never had a watch with a white dial. And that's really where it started. Um, the fact that it's a night diver made it even more cool. But I just love the whole 80s tag aesthetic. I think my watch is from the late 80s, probably 88 or 89, given a guess. Um, very much of its time. Um, and um, we discussed in a, in, in a previous uh, video about uh, peak brightling and I think that was peak tag as well. Yeah, I mean the late I 90s agree. was just such a great time for watches generally. It was and, the iconic uh, tag yeah, all their time. Yeah. It? They, they were at their coolest. Absolutely. Point, absolutely. Yeah. So um, for all those reasons, uh, thanks to Timothy Dalton and thanks to the fact that late 80s watches are so cool, thanks to the fact I didn't have a white face and thanks to the fact that I just loved this full loom, I sort of had to have it and I've never seen anything like it until now. Hence the reason we're here. So what we've done uh, very recently is we've just had a very long interview with Chris Vale, the CEO of NTH. Now, this will come out in about four separate parts. Very, very interesting conversation I had with him. He talks extensively about the creation of NTHs, especially the neck and model. And he gives a unique perspective on selling watches from, an American, uh, from the American market side. However, we do talk specifically about this watch because he was at pains to explain why they'd done what they'd done. Because one of the big differences between the Necken and the aforementioned Hoyer is that they've given it solid black hands. Now, we've had a really interesting experience with another watch uh, recently that we were doing a field trial with. I, I think I, did I mention this to you? Go on. No. Right, okay. I took another watch with a full limb dial home for a field trial because we were going to do a review on it. Um, shan't mention the name. And when I woke up during the night, the full loom dial and the luminous hands were effectively the same color. And the outline of the hands wasn't defined enough. So I ended up looking at a big green blob. I see the issue. Now, I mentioned this to Chris Vale, and he says, well, you know, at the end of the day, how often does that happen? And I had to concede he had a point how often it doesn't really matter that much. Well, the answer is yes, it did matter to me because if you've bought a watch that has a full loom dial, it's because you actually wanted that feature. You said yourself, what, we were just talking about dark rooms there. Yeah, absolutely. I spend a lot of time um, locked in a dark room um, looking at my watch, which isn't as nonsensical as that sounds if you have a full loom dial. No, especially if you have, great thing to get hold of, a UV torch. I have got one of those, thanks to you actually, Richard. Because then you can uh, read a book with it. Yep, yeah, I, I read a book, but mostly I just charge my loom. 
That's not a euphemism. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> Moving on. So, what? what <laughs> we'll compose ourselves in a second, yeah. don't worry. I think um, the interesting thing about the watch that I was trialing was that um, I actually did have an issue with it. And whilst Chris, you know, quite rightly pointed out that, you know, how often does it happen that you're looking at the dial and, and, and at that time in the morning. But if you've bought a watch with a full limb dial, as you did with your Hoyer, or your, your tag, you want it, you want to look at it. I mean, and I know the, the, the darkened room thing is slightly musical, slightly whimsical, yeah. but nevertheless, when you do wake up at night or you're out late at night and you've got a full limb dial, you want to see the thing. That's and the whole point of having it. You need a it. contrast, otherwise yeah. you won't see it. And this you, other say, company so. had failed to do that, and that really bugged me. Yeah. Whereas, and I think, you know, the, correct me if I'm wrong now, the, the tag you've got has got loomed hands. It has, yes. Is the loom on the hands different to the loom on the dial? The truth is I can't remember exactly, but I don't remember having issues with visibility, so I'm guessing it must be. Yeah. Because it's interesting, because my very first, I think as we've talked about in a previous video, my very first Tag Heuer, which I bought at huge expense when I was very young, was one of the original F1s. Mm. The ones where you had to cut the rubber strap. I think we mentioned it in the Watches of Lancashire video. The, you remember the tiny, they were about 32 yeah. mil? Yeah, yeah. Very, very small ones. And that quite noticeably had different loom on the hands as opposed to the dial. Because yeah. the dial eventually did die down, but the hands stayed bright through the night. So you had that contrast that you exactly. needed to. Yeah. The alternate, which I've not seen before, is what Chris has done with the NTH. He's given the complete blackout hands, solid hands, black indices, black second hand, no loom at all on them. So even as the loom dies down really to not a lot, you still have that contrast. And I think that is what makes this a particularly unusual watch. So if you're a bit of a Bond fan, you like the idea of having a, a a Hoyer Night Diver, which is, let's be honest, not easy to get hold of now, a particularly good one. This, I think this makes us a really viable alternative. I think sort of it just goes to show that um, it's a very innovative solution, isn't it? And it goes to show that, as is often the case with watches, less is more. I'm not talking about Roger Moore. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying less is more in the sense that you can put on, you can have watches which are over-designed, which have too much low loom, and, and you have a sort of con contrasting or non-contrasting mess. Whereas what I loved about this watch, straight away actually from the moment I saw it, was its simplicity. And that is because there is nothing there that is superfluous um, in any shape or form. And even the things that people think are necessary, such as loomed hands, have been taken out. Because mm. as long as you have the contrast, you don't need everything to be loomed. So um, what, what I, I, I just like the, the concept. It's so simple, so elegant and so striking. Yeah, I, th I think they've actually achieved something unique with it. I think it's USP is the fact they've had that bravery not to have the loom on the hands. Um, the, the spec of the watch itself is very, very good. It's um, 300 meter water resistant, as you'd expect from an NTH. It has a 42 hour power reserve from the Miyota movement, which NTH, although they fit the Miyota movement, they then regulate that movement to plus or minus up to 15 seconds a day. And what they've also done, which I really like is, the dial is C3 loom, but the bezel they've kept blue BGW9 loom. So at night you do get this really quite fantastic light show from the watch. And also the bezel is so different from the dial. Uh, it's probably one of the best nighttime contrasts I've seen if you did want to use your bezel at night. I'm just wondering, do you think it would make and there's a reason I'm asking this, is because I think as a few of you may know, we're about to embark on a quest where I have to find my ultimate field watch. Do you think that could work as a field watch? I think that Would full limb dial work when you're out in the, the forest in the evening? At night? Well, I think as long as you had enough light to uh, uh, make sure your loom stood out, yeah. Then, then yes. Um, I, I, th I think it would. I mean, I think as well as its simplicity, its versatility yeah. is the wonderful thing about this watch. And I, I, I like it. It just, for me, it, it honestly ticks all my boxes. It has the simplicity. It's striking at the same time, but it's not sort of self-consciously striking, if you see what I mean. It's not trying too hard at all. It's very slim as well. It's very slim. I mean, it's very it's slim. It's eminently wearable, isn't it? What, what, what I'm wondering, and I'd love to have your 
perspective on this is that these two watches are the same. Obviously, one is on the metal bracelet, and, and this is um, on a rubber. Which which do you think works best? Well, you know, we, we're serial strap changers here, as you know, and, and it breaks the heart of watch companies who produce these beautiful bracelets like the NTH one here, and then we go and take the thing off and put it <laughs> on something else. Um, this um, rubber strap this is on here is, is actually an NTH rubber strap, um, which is, is, is available from NTH as, a, as a, uh, an aftermarket product. Um, but it's very similar to our vintage tropical strap, the Zulu Diver tropical strap. I think it works extremely well on that. I do too. I yeah, am. Yeah. I. I am. I. I throw it out there. I am not the greatest fan of steel bracelets. Richard, is it, is it true? This rumor I hear that at home you have a drawer full of um, extremely high-end watch straps that you have removed in favour of others. Uh, it, it is. It is true. Um, I have a box at home, not a drawer, um, which is full of about two thousand pounds worth of leather straps, uh, steel bracelets, and various other means of attaching watches from Omega, Breitling, Rolex, etc., etc. Because you know me, I, I am a serial military nylon wearer and I just like all my watches on, on Zulu Diver nylons uh, like this one. Um, it's, uh, and, and, and in answer to your question here, uh, I think that the, uh, the NTH Night Diver looks, I personally think, better on the rubber strap. Mm. I think the black and the black of the bezels are extremely contrasting. The, the, the buckle matches, of course, the brushed effect of the case. Um, the, the, strap, the rubber strap we would recommend for this is the Zulu Diver Vintage Tropical, which is just going to look so good on this watch. It's going to really enhance its dive look. But equally, you can't beat a military nylon strap. And the Bond, I mean, am I correct in saying Everything looks better on a Bond strap. I think I think that's the subject of a whole other film. Um, I think most things look better on a Bond strap. I can think of a couple of examples. I'm not sure that a Rainbow Daytona would necessarily look better on a Bond strap, but no, indeed, no, anywhere. No, no. But I, I think the Bond strap would look better than the watch, that's personally. That's on, I think that's, on that, that's but it. But I, I, on the whole, I like the principle. I like the principle. Yeah. We, should, we should definitely talk about it. We'll it's, explore that. Yeah, yeah. Watch for that one coming up. Does everything look better on a Bond strap? Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I think that you were talking about the versatility of this watch. It is so primed for strap swapping. Absolutely. We've tried it on a few, actually, today, and it just looks great on them all, uh, which is just, it just it's a, just another reason to take to buy this watch it, it, you know you've got that classic uh night diver look which you're going to struggle to find in pristine condition it, from the original manufacturer you've got a modern contemporary watch it can take any strap and hold it well and it's pretty good value as well isn't it that's the thing that yeah, struck me when yeah. we were looking it, earlier it's, on it's just over 600 pounds yeah. for what um, you're getting absolutely it's an extremely good package yeah it's a it's a good point so anyway, we just thought we'd want to share this watch with you because we really like it. In fact, so much so that we're going to go off and wear it for the next week. Yeah. And um, Anthony's going to be doing a fantastic review on the watch now, a full review, which will go into far more detail than our uh, incoherent ramblings here. Now, what I'm looking forward to is, is getting this watch back home and comparing it to the original tag. Yeah, Diver, that'll be a good photograph. The Get the two together. I think that'll be a classic photo. And um, yeah, yeah, we'll see sort of, um, we'll see how that works out. But I'm really looking forward to wearing this. And in the short time it's been on my wrist, I've already got very attached to it. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you soon.